Ah, the Presario 400 series by Compaq. Here they are being born. Let me tell you about them. First, the 425. It has a 14 inch SVGA monitor. The monitor is capable of going up to 1024 by 768. It has a 1.44 megabyte HD floppy. It has monitor controls. Those are always nice. Hard drive indicator, power indicator, power button. And on the back it has the other necessary things. Here is the back. The bottom row here is the ports that came with the machine. And that is PS2 keyboard, mouse, serial, parallel, joystick port, or game port, and a crappy modem. And uh, everything there is fantastic except the crappy modem. It has two ISA slots inside, which I have placed an Etherlink 3 for networkings, and a Sound Blaster 16, the value variant, which sounds like it'd be worse, but it's actually kind of nice. Now, let's take a look at what's inside. It's got these wonky screws, which are called Torx T15. They're actually used on quite a few things, but uh, not usually on computers. Once you take out those two screws, this handle here slides the entirety of the computer away from the monitor and power supply portion of the machine. As you can see, it has a hard drive, floppy drive. There's my Sound Blaster 16 value. Let me turn this on its side here. Under here we see the crappy modem's internal workings. And there you can see the network card, kinda. Now, here's the RAM, which maxes out at 20 megs, 4 megs of which down there are on board, and the other 16 comes in the form of a max of 8 meg sticks with two slots. And you might notice that I've got an Intel overdrive. Now, this isn't your typical overdrive, this is a Pentium overdrive. So my 486 box here is now a Pentium at 84 megahertz. The model is PODP5V. What that means is it can run on a 5 volt bus. You might not think that's important, but this is actually a Socket 1 machine. And if you know anything about 486 machines, you know that Socket 1 does not support these processors. Or so they would make you believe. If you look real careful, you can see that the pins are hanging over the socket. and not quite touching the motherboard. Those extra pins in the extra row, which usually requires a socket 2 or 3, are all for voltage. And it turns out that if you just jam an overdrive processor into a socket 1 motherboard, it will work and it doesn't really give a shit. This is the original processor. Let me just turn this around here. An i486SX has no coprocessor, runs at 25 crappy hertz. And, uh, let me just say, it, it wasn't very fast. My machine actually shipped to me with a DX4 overdrive, and that wasn't fast enough. Check this out. Next to the original processor here, somebody who was making the motherboard design decided to stencil a weird little one-eyed alien head. I don't know what the fuck this is doing here, but it's very amusing, and it's in every machine of this entire series. This was the chip that I used in this machine for a very long time. What it is, is a AM5x86 133 MHz surface mounted chip with a heat sink mounted onto this little converty thing with a voltage adapter which then plugs into the socket. And what that means is you can take the nice 3.3 volt AMD processor, which runs way faster than your typical processor, and stick it in an old ass socket like that one, and it will work. These jumpers here, let me just uh, switch to macro mode. These jumpers here are for configuring the settings. This one goes from right back to right through cache, 3x or 4x multiplier, and whether it's an overdrive or a normal processor. And there's a missing jumper that would disable the voltage regulator. I don't know if that would function or not if I put it in, but I don't really care because I only use this in 5 volt machines anyway. Here 
is the connector for the video card to connect to the monitor. In the front of the case that hooks into here. What that means is you can't hook a normal monitor up to that. You can only hook that weird little pluggy thing which then goes up into the monitor and there's the power supply which is what the casing here is. And uh, what that means is I can't swap out the video card and the video card in here is okay but it kinda sucks once you've upgraded it to a Pentium with one of these things. I wish that I had PCI slots and I could hook up my own video card. I won't get PCI slots no matter what I do and I could wire a custom thing to hook up a video card and maybe hook up a custom thing where I replace the whole motherboard and I might do that someday in one of my extra units of this but uh... but not now, not soon. Let's put this thing back. Line it up and blam! Let's get this thing hooked back up and I can show you guys how it works. Here it is all set up in its natural habitat. You might notice that I'm using IBM keyboard and the original IBM PS2 mouse. And the reason for this, the reason that I'm not using the compact one that came with it is I don't have them. Uh, also, this keyboard kicks ass. IBM made the best keyboards. The mouse, I probably would have used some other mouse or whatever, but it matches the keyboard. And these speakers, are some generic weird brand. They just say Multimedia Amplified Speaker System. I was able to find a picture of a boxed set of them in some other country, but other than that I have no idea about anything about them. But I like them. Alright, so let's get this thing booted up. There's the blinking line. Memory count up to the 20 meg mark. The little gray square that's about to appear in the top right means that's when you hit the key to go into the BIOS. I use a disk overlay because this thing does not support very large disks. Alright, and it's good to go. Now, uh, I have lots of games on here and I play lots of games on here, but I'm going to show you the coup de gras. I type way faster than that, but uh, I'm in the dark typing with one hand. Give me a break. That's not P. Alright. There we go. Quake runs pretty good. This is barely a Pentium. This computer barely meets its, like, specs to run Quake well. But it does run, and it does run pretty good. Uh, hold on, let me turn the speakers on. Your average 486, this is not. As you can see, it's pretty playable. Sometimes it's very fast, like right here. Smooth frame rates. But when there's a lot of particles and a lot of AIs going on, it can be choppy but not as choppy as on your typical 486. This machine actually can play Quake. All right, let's get out of here. What shall I show you next? One of my favorite classic games. Ah, that logo. Wow, that moon looks really trippy on this camera. Oh, news!
Oh my god, a zombie! Pretty gory for a, you know, old school DOS game like this. I played this game when I was very young. And typically, if I'm showing a game, I'll show you emulator footage. But the, uh, the objective of this review is to show you the machine. And, as Freakin' D once said when he reviewed his Presario 425, Doom was the machine that people were usually upgrading their uh, 486s with these overdrive chips and such with for. And, uh, while mine is kind of an overkill for this, you only really need a DX266 to play this game great. It most definitely does play it. And this game has some bad-ass music. That's a... that gives you enough of a taste of doom. Another Bersario, you might ask? Let's not be hasty. Look at the label. This is the Prolinea Net 25S. It's basically the exact same machine as the Bersario 425. It comes with a 25 megahertz 486SX on board, and it has the exact same design for the case. The monitor is identical, and the back plate is identical, except when you get to the end. You can see here that it has an AUI port and an RJ45 network port. Now, if I open this up, you can see more differences. See, it comes factory pre-installed with nice rust. <laughs> Alright, um, I've got this upgrade to a DX2 at the moment, but if you look around here, it's pretty much the same machine. But when you get over to this corner where the modem was, you see this card that doesn't look to be attached to anything normal. It doesn't take up an ISIS slot. If you look down here, you can see that the modem components are missing. Underneath there is pretty much just blank circuit board, and in its place, there is a connector, which this is the other side of, that this card here plugs into this way, and it provides the networking capabilities. It is an Intel-based network card, <clears throat> and that means that you don't need to worry about hooking one up into an ISA slot. You could save that ISA slot for something else. Now, personally, I don't really see the use of a gaining an ISA slot, since there aren't really many places to put more devices in here. You can't add another couple hard drives, you can't add a zip drive, etc., unless it's external. So, unless maybe you're adding a SCSI card with an external port, which is pretty much the only thing I can imagine putting in an extra slot in that situation, there's not really much use. Also, this machine uses a slightly newer chipset. I didn't mention the chipset in the 425 portion of the video, but uh, this is the VLSI chip, which I believe is the chipset in these. There's another chip back there, and they both share a number. In this case, it is 9340. On the 425, that number is 9336. Now, for some reason, the Net1 here, when hooked up with the exact same RAM chips, the exact same hard drive, the exact same ISA cards, and everything exactly the same, 
will crash when you run quick. And uh, I figured maybe it's a network card, maybe there's some sort of conflict, but uh, if you replace, I mean, if, if you remove the network card completely, it does not alleviate that problem. So, something about this machine, I imagine the chipset is just fundamentally incompatible with Quake. This is the Presario 433. This shipped with a 33 megahertz processor, but is otherwise pretty much exactly the same thing as the 425. As you can see in this picture, it does not actually have the soldered on 25 megahertz processor and instead shipped with a socketed processor. That's pretty much the only difference. It has a different chipset revision just like lots of these machines do and there's actually differences between different 425 machines within the same like model like that. So it doesn't really definitely correspond, but the 433 seem to have slightly newer revisions if this one is any indication. This particular 425 series machine, or 400 series machine rather, is by a third party company called Ventratex, and it is a house call system receiver, if this label is to be believed. Basically, this is just rebadged. They took a 400 series machine, slapped some extra modems or something in it, and then said that it was uh, a phone answering device. Which, this is actually a task this machine was well suited for, but uh, it's a bit odd for a company to rebadge a somewhat popular machine that is such a unique design. I mean, anyone who looks at this who's ever seen a compact Presario of that era is going to go, Oh, it's a 425 that they rebadged. And that's going to make them look a little bit bad. <laughs> anyway, I thought this was a bit unique, and I happened to run across it at some point on eBay, so I thought I would show you guys this as well. Alright, so I think I've covered everything. Um, this is Yushitax signing out, and let me leave you with a little video clip of people at Bethesda Studios talking about a Presario 425 that they use. So this is an old uh, compact Presario that we use to still play our old games like uh, Arena here. So once in a while you'll find somebody sitting here playing through Arena.